and we're live after a after a sort of awkward week off that was not exactly planned, but <laughs> you know, er, it, it was a it was a busy week for a, a lot of us. I was a I was abroad. I just got back. Um, I don't know what you guys were doing, but other people were busy too. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> apologize for last week being off with no notice, but uh, we're we're back. We're back and better than ever. All Give us refreshed. a little more, Jack. Where were you and why? Why'd you go? Oh, sure. I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. But I first have to let the fine folks know that they really should consider liking and subscribing um, like they do on so many videos. It helps our channel out a lot um, and, and pushes it out to more people interested in all of our value investing topics like process that we'll be getting into. Um, and also check out all the great stuff in the description below. Uh, Seeking Alpha, that has a discount link where you can get material on uh, process and any other stock you're looking at. Um, can help in the research process, as well as share site um, for your portfolio tracking. We have a discount link for that. Both of those go a long way towards helping the channel, so we'd appreciate that. Check out the Discord as well. All right. Um, Brad, what did you ask where I was? Where where you were and why? Oh, sure. I, I was in England with my dad, and uh, I, I took him to Tank Fest, um, which is a very niche event. Um there, there's this place called the Tank Museum, the Tank Museum, out in Bovington, England. It's like two and a half hours west of London or southwest uh, towards the coast. And um, basically, they have like hundreds and hundreds of tanks um, from all eras, like going back to the first tanks ever the, that the British developed. Since it's in Britain, they have all the really old stuff up through the modern modern era. So it's and every year they drive a bunch of them around and it, it's just a very boyish experience. And it's, it's pretty cool seeing big, big machines go around the, the military is there and they're pretty heavily involved. Um, they did like a demonstration on like using some of their current equipment. And uh, uh, yeah, my dad's always wanted to go. I've always been interested in going as well. So I, I got him, got it as a 60th birthday present uh, last year, but we ended up canceling because of travel was all messed up last year. Uh, and then we got out uh, this this past week, so uh, it was uh, it was pretty cool. So um, <laughs> maybe ten years from now, we'll go back and see how the collections changed and and see what's up. But uh, it's definitely a cool trip for anyone interested in that sort of thing, military history, just history in general, machines. Uh, it's a good time. Is your dad a military history buff? Yeah, his uh, uh, his dad was in the Air Force as an engineer. Um, in the Vietnam era. So um, they, nice. he kind of grew up on the military machine sort of, uh, I don't want to call it a fix, but uh, definitely was interested from a young age. Um, and he kind of passed that same sort of thing on to me. So I've, I've always been interested too. So, cool. um, so yeah. Yep. Cool. Howdy, Steve. Nice to see you. So <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing this hat because I just bought a one-way flight to Asheville, North Carolina. So oh, it's one happening. Way it's happening. I'm moving to Asheville. So in celebration, I'm wearing my cowboy ish hat. Well, we're going to be moving at almost the same time, Brad. Uh, we're probably going to move into Houston in August. You'll, you'll be moving to, to Asheville in, uh, in August as well. So, so we're both moving South. Yeah. in, in the, in the dead of summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's nice and sticky. That's probably not nearly as bad there though. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, did you get to drive a tank, Jack? No, but they do let you. They, they do have some where you can actually climb in um, that, that aren't running. Um, but no, I, I did not actually drive one. But there are some of the. There are some places. Uh, there's actually one in in Texas. I know. I think a couple in Texas where you can actually get in the tank and drive it around. Uh, they have some old stuff, some newer stuff as well. That that is also on my bucket list, and I definitely want to do that with like some friends or something bring out the boys to go drive tanks around. That'd be pretty cool. But, but I know that is an option, but it was not at the tank museum. Yeah. I want to make fun. <laughs> yeah. Texas. Yeah. The, you the, the, you the... and Monish. <laughs> I, should, I should call him out. Like, hey. and, and Matt Peterson. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Texas is a big place. Uh, it's, I think, I think it is, um, I think it's like six hours from Houston or something. So it's like really far because the state's just gigantic. Yeah, it's the second largest state in the U.S. Is it second? Is it behind? It wouldn't be behind California, would it? Way behind Alaska. 
It's Alaska, really? I knew Alaska was oh, big, yeah. but not that big. Real big. Because uh, I know on, on, on maps, it's misleading because it's, yeah. you know, as you get further towards the poles, mm -hmm. countries stretch out. But, uh, wow. Yeah, that's why New Zealand looks so small as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right we're, Tom, we're actually, actually enormous. <laughs> yeah. It's like bigger than the U.S. Same, right. same with Australia. Australia is about the same size of the U.S., which is nuts. Yeah, Australia is actually massive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I flew to, I flew from, I think I initially went Auckland to Melbourne. I want to say, and then I flew mm -hmm. to Singapore, which we just had to kind of go across Australia for like probably two thirds of that flight. It was like several hours just to, just, just to looking get out at the of desert, Australia. right? Basically, yeah, <laughs> just red dirt. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we get into process? Might as well before the people get too restless. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, where, where do we start? Uh, do we want to bring up the press release just to yeah, give the people the, something to look at? Or <clears throat> is, is the press release pretty though? Uh, you know, I've got really a, sure the I've headline, got a, right? Jack, um, if you want. Say again. I've got the press release here. If you want. Why? Yeah. Why, why don't you, Tom? Uh, share it, and I'll put it up. that coming through yep sweet so um yeah big announcement out of process this week they have announced a long-term share repurchase program of naspers and process shares um they give a bit of commentary around that i think this is something that process shareholders have probably been looking for for a while which we can maybe get into but um further down in the press release they actually say that uh they're going to kind of fuel the the buyback by essentially selling their 10 cent stake which we obviously know a lot of people have bought process in the first place because you can get a kind of cheaper you can get into 10 cent at a lower price basically because process trades at this big discount to net asset value and uh maybe karan can speak to this a little but they've actually got a shareholder vote coming up as well um basically to allow them to repurchase up to about 50% of the shares outstanding. So monster repurchase if they Ooh. get that across the line. If they get it across the line. Yeah. I mean, that's a big, if <laughs> for the, yeah, for you had some thoughts on that though, Karan before, before we went live here. I did. Yeah. And I did share them on Twitter, but then I kind of deleted everything because no point in publicly criticizing people who are, you know, <laughs> increasing returns to shareholders, apparently. So, yeah. Yeah. For those less familiar, um, what, where is, uh, where, what's, what's the process like portfolio look like? And what, what is all this discount to, to nav sort of like, can we set the scene a bit for someone who might be new to process? Okay. But like, before we get into that uh, for taxes, does like, Okay, so this is my understanding. If they sell a stake in Tencent and reinvest that into their own business, they don't have to pay any tax on that. Is that accurate? Does someone, can someone like reconfirm that? It doesn't sound right. I thought, I thought they yeah. had that big tax liability and that's kind of a big reason they haven't been sold. Right? No, but that's what, so when they last sold it in April 20, on April 21st, I think. It was 2021. Um, they didn't have to pay any tax because of the whole structure that they've got. So when people say that the discount exists because of tax liabilities, that doesn't make sense to me as such. Yeah. Do you guys know about yeah. that? Or? Well, Jason's telling us where you're correct in the comments. So <laughs> yeah, we'll it take must be correct. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the discount obviously exists because of management. And I think people don't think that management have the right ability or intention to allocate capital. Or that might be why the discount exists. Can well, we rewind a second to explain what the structure is and, and kind of what, what, right. what process is? Okay. Karan, you want to do it? <laughs> um, Put you on the spot. Where do I start? <laughs> okay, so there is the South African company Naspers which invested in Tencent like in 20, in, two, in the 2000s. Is it 2002? Yeah, 2000? 2002, and I think, yeah. Yeah, so they've had like a 
multi-bagger return, like I think they're up like almost 6,000 or something percent, 6,000 X <laughs> on the initial investment. And uh, their initial investment has grown to like 170 billion at this point. And the company process trades at around 100 billion. So you have this huge discrepancy between the value of Tencent and process. And that's pretty much what people think is the investment opportunity. Yeah. Was that okay? <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. What a percentage yeah. of the portfolio is Naspers? Isn't it like almost everything? Or the vast majority, well, I should say. I've got the, if you want to share that screen I've got there, Jack, I've got sort of the breakdown of their net asset value here. There this is go. from just yesterday. Um, so total net asset value, $162.4 billion. Um, $125 billion of that is just the 10 cent position. There you go. So huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, Karan, you, you probably know uh, some of their other investments far better than the rest of us, but um they seem to be sort of like a almost like a vc fund type approach like there's a lot of kind of early stage startup type businesses in there with food delivery and so on right and sort of the smaller the smaller parts of the portfolio yeah so they've got the listed assets which you can easily get the values of those by looking at what they listed at and you know apply that discount and then figure out the nav but then for the unlisted assets, they've kind of put their own valuations on that. And, you know, that might be questionable because we've seen like recent valuations drop off in the private equity market. So um, if you take that at face value, you know, there's a huge discount. Um, but if you were to discount that, then obviously, you know, there's a reduction there. But Yeah, I wonder, I wonder when they last updated those numbers. Well, um, this is first of July. First of July. Yeah. But I, I mean, the private assets. How so the private assets happen? would be based on when they raise valuation rounds, right? So I don't uh -huh. think. Right. But yeah. Jack, I sent you uh, in the private chat a link to a fact sheet for this mm -hmm. year, and it kind of breaks out their their different businesses. Uh, there's a couple couple different buckets might be useful for people. This one right here? No. Yeah. 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 Talks well, about what, what different sectors they, they invest in, how big a chunk yeah. that is of the portfolio, that kind of thing. Yeah, but I, I mean, just I'm just doing the maths here. So, ten, I mean, still the 10 cent position is about, 77 percent of the net asset value and right. um just looking at the stock price before going live here um process is trading at about a 40 little over a 40 percent discount to that net asset value so even if you valued all the food delivery stuff at zero you're still at a discount to the 10 cent mm -hmm. position it's well, pretty crazy we were starting to talk about the source of that discount it, is it really just a management Risk. But it's not only zero, it's negative, right? Because most of the, pretty much all their other businesses are negative. They're, they say it's profitable, but actually they're in a loss making state. So even if you can't value them at zero, also, they're less than that. It's so is, like, that, um, is, is that, a, is that a potential reason for the, for the discount being so large? Is it, is it that sort of dead weight? Um, or, or, but you were saying that the tax implication isn't really a tax implication, but I, I thought that was a big thing that was kind of pa uh, pausing some investors or, or, or getting them to hesitate. So what I saw from the last time that they divested a portion of that 10 cent stake, they had to pay no taxes on that because all of it was reinvested into the business. So I don't know, there's some agreement, I guess with between dutch laws and south african laws where um, they yeah, don't have that, it's, i'd imagine there's some sort of cap on that but i don't know i'm just guessing um let me see if I, i'm going to try to i'm, I'm going to try to figure out if i could see something about that yeah nothing that they've like explicitly mentioned so yeah, yeah well one of the things pabrai talked about this in in one of his talks he said Give me some popular artists. You're looking at a Picasso. Who's who's another painter that you guys are familiar with? 
Brad Kellner. Yes. <laughs> so I think you were saying Monet, Monet and Picasso. I'm Monet, I'm Monet and Picasso. Let's <laughs> go with the Monet. two examples. Yeah, yeah, let's go with Monet. So if 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 you want a Picasso, right, you're, you're going to be willing to pay full price for a Picasso. But if the only way to get the Picasso is to get the Monet, you're not going to pay full price for the Monet because you don't really care about it, right? And so I think that's part of why uh, these kind of companies trade at discounts because, you know, most of the people who own Prosys are, are in it for 10 cents. And so either they don't really know what the rest of the stuff is worth, they don't know how to value those businesses, or they just don't care about those businesses. So, you know, that's that's one of the reasons for the discount, I think. Yeah, the initial reaction to the whole share buyback program was clearly very positive from the market because the stock just rallied that day. I think it was up like 15, 16 percent. Wow. Um, but I mean, if you really look at it, it it in the short term, it's fantastic. But in the long term, it might be a questionable decision. For example, suppose if they were to engage in the same share buyback program before uh, everything happened between Russia and Ukraine and they had to write down that entire portion of the assets. They would have bought back into the Russian business at a higher scale and eventually had to write that down. Now, who's to say that the other part of the VC portfolio doesn't get written down massively after this buyback? So that's kind of the long-term risk that I'm seeing over here. Um, but that's just, I think, way out. So. <clears throat> But I mean, you you still have the same risk of those assets potentially being impaired in the future without the buyback. And I mean, by by doing the buyback, you have higher proportional ownership in all the assets as a result because of the discount. That's what so, you have a higher proportional as, like ownership in assets that could go to could be written off, rather than them just using that money and then investing into different opportunities like a venture capital fund. I see. So, 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 um, yeah. So it's more that you're getting concentrated in existing assets versus diversifying into newer stuff that kind of concerns you. Gotcha. And I'm not really optimistic about their whole um, food delivery business. It's a very competitive space, you know. Unless there's a lot of consolidation in that space, it's it kind of reminds me of like the whole Bruce Greenwald example, you know, where you if you invest in a space where there's a lot of competition essentially growth is going to have a negative impact on the business in the long term that's how i kind of see most of their space like in payments and ed tech and um, even delivery it's all the same so really competitive markets yeah yeah but i mean e even then like if you so i mean we just said 10 cent is like 77 percent of the nav and they're trading it something like 60 percent of the nav i mean even if you assume that all of those other businesses are still worth zero the buybacks i think still make sense because you, you're buying 77 cents for 60 cents if you're just looking at the 10 cent element right like the the per share exposure to, to 10 cent to 10 cents still still grows from the buybacks it makes perfect sense if you don't include the uh, extra compensation the management is expected to get so right. as a result of all this, they've included new incentives, which give additional compensation to management over the next few years, if they're able to achieve that increase in share price. So how substantial are we talking? So it's funny because they don't mention that in the remuneration <laughs> report. They're like, we can't reveal the short term incentives because we can't tell our competitors what the targets are. That's literally what they write in the report <laughs> that's helpful yeah yeah i mean you you would think i mean they're talking about um 50 percent of the shares outstanding that would be like 50 um, billion yeah sure surely the compensation isn't enough to offset the benefits of 50 billion dollars of five x <laughs> but mm. i don't know <laughs> maybe it's, <laughs> it's, it's that would not be pretty just about insane that. i mean yeah but i mean couple that with like it's great in the short term, so like maybe under five years, because we're definitely going to see a huge increase. We're going to see a rally in process stock in the next six months. No doubt about that. Um, so, you know, can't complain about that. <laughs> but 
it's questionable in the long term unless they find like another 10 cent or another like 100x or 1000x investment in the next 10 years yeah but if, but but if you're just in there for the 10 cent position then it's <laughs> Oh. oh my goodness! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Was that a Quran flipped upside down? Is that a, 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 a Quran OnlyFans preview we just got? <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? It's a good thing you're wearing shorts. We got full yeah. heat. That was that was intense. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Great. Um, I was gonna say. Oh, I mean, over the long term, Quran. Like, if if yeah. you are just in there for ten cent. I think it's it's like mathematically still makes sense, it, even it if could. the compensation's huge and the it very well could yeah yeah, and that's pretty much why I kind of stop being as critical about everything because I'm like I have no idea how this will play out in the long term, so just enjoy the returns, wait and watch. You know? Yeah. So yeah, my my big curiosity here it seems like on the surface if you're selling ten cent. To, to fund this buyback program, it seems like over the long term, your shareholder exposure to Tencent is going to go down. But is, is that necessarily true? Well, the, the per share exposure to Tencent will go up with the current discount to NAV. But the, the, the per share exposure to all the other businesses will also go up and it'll go up to a greater extent than the Tencent exposure. But you're still getting extra 10 cent exposure per share. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah. yeah I think I've got to work through that myself, but <laughs> yeah. I think it, that makes sense. It, it, you're you're yeah. getting a, because you're getting, you're ultimately getting a greater share of the overarching business and the overarching business is all the stuff they own. So the, the like that, that, that is, that is what, what's happening um, ultimately. Yeah, as long as the the repurchases are done at a discount to NAV, um, your your per share exposure to ten cent will go up. Right, but your per share exposure to the other stuff will go up a little more because they're funding it with with ten cent. Right. So so the net asset value per yeah, share sure. will grow automatically when they when they sell ten cent and do a buyback. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's it interesting that this just... that this buyback announcement didn't have a great effect, right? Like we don't want the share price to pop right away because that's going to make it, you know, less, less effective for the buybacks. I don't yep. think we're going to see a down week for process in the next like six months. Hmm. I think every week it's going to just be <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more because they are artificially just pumping the stock at this point. Yeah. They have their I own. You want to put money on. on that, but I guess you kind of have. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. I mean, the uh, ten, like ten cent could also fall off a cliff over the next six months. Who knows? That a that a impact. right. But um, that as far as the discount, you would think that that closes as they go through this. But um, who knows? Grabbing my popcorn. I mean, if. If if you're a process shareholder, you'd want the discount to blow out as wide as possible. <laughs> it, but if you're uh, process like management, while going through this process, you want to push the share price up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, love those conflicts of interest. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. It, it, to me, it seems beneficial for the for the process shareholder. Ideally, you'd be paying a Warren Buffett, like what's he get paid 200 grand a year salary or something and that's it. 100. But, 100. Yeah. I, th I think he gave himself a pay rise a few what? years back. Yeah. He, <laughs> he doubled he his of, paycheck? He, that's insane. He slipped, he slipped that under the radar, I think. Wow. <laughs> Ideally, you'd have that, but it seems to still work to me. I, 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 don't, I don't own process. I, I have no, um, yeah, I have no position in it, but what's kept you out of me? It makes sense um i don't well I, I i view it as a vehicle to get to get into 10 cent like um most people probably are but um i i think i just don't understand 10 cent well enough um like I, yeah i just view it as purchasing 10 cent basically in a slightly unusual way um so i'd want to understand 10 cent better than i currently do and i'm also a little wary of overexposing to Chinese tech because of because I've already got Alibaba in there, yep. so that's why Tom, Tom's a Baba guy. Yeah, does Daily Journal own Tencent? 
You guys know? I Maybe. don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, seen it's, it not anywhere. Di- it's not disclosed anywhere. Yeah, you wouldn't see I, that. I heard it. Uh, Chris Bloomstrand talk about it. Like, he kind of let it slip, like, in one of the... Well, I think he was just talks. speculating on it. Yeah. Was it? Okay. I think he said, like, they probably own process. Like, uh, they probably own Tencent or they probably own mm-hmm. process, something like that. <laughs> I thought I heard Charlie maybe at the Daily Journal meeting say that um, he wasn't interested in Tencent because of the gaming aspect of of their business. That's like three percent or something, right? Is it's it three really percent? That's rat poison, Grun. <laughs> <laughs> Any bit of rat poison is, is no good. Yeah, we could speculate all day on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting if um, Daily Journal's got a few weird things with disclosures. Like they they barely share anything about journal technologies, right. let alone the the stocks that they own, which would be a much simpler disclosure. <laughs> but um, if if you read Matt Peterson stuff on Daily Journal, like he's they've got all these all these long term contracts with various courts around, well, all across the world, like courthouses in Australia, they've got eight and ten year long contracts with and they just don't even talk about it in the annual report it's weird yeah he went down the rabbit hole on that one didn't he big time yeah yeah well should we tackle some questions yeah sure um is there anything else we want to say about process we should definitely stick with process for a little while there were some questions in here uh Karan, did you have news you wanted to share? Oh, sh- no, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> no, he's good. <laughs> he's good. He's already shared that. I I've shared that it on Twitter, like it. everyone knows, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that news. <laughs> Wait, what did you think, Tom? <laughs> oh, I thought it was that only OnlyFans release. Oh, right. Of before. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Wait, Jack told you about like, we're collaborating? <laughs> Yeah, we got Jack's we got just like, had a tank photo shoot that he's <laughs> about to. Oh write. wow, <laughs> that's niche. Bronze, <laughs> bronze feet, my tanks. <laughs> that's some that's some premium content right there. Yeah. Uh, all right, switching back. <laughs> uh, this question from William here, Bob, the CEO, and. This is something the CFO bought a few million in shares in recent months, but but don't own a quite small percentage. How much of a signal is that? Um, especially so compared Bob to an owner operator own, like Brett Kelly buying. Yeah, Bob know, has to own, partner. I think, 10 times his annual salary uh, mm-hmm. worth of process stock. So I think that's just a requirement for him. So yeah. not a and, signal. And, well, I think we should probably also keep in mind that Cali Partners is like a 200 million market cap. We're talking <laughs> like 100 billion here. So the, they're not going to own huge percentages of the stock unless they've, you know, done a Warren Buffett or something. Can, yeah. Uh, Been there forever, hold it forever, which is unlikely. Yeah. But what, what do you guys think of CEO, CFO purchases as signal? Do those hold much weight for you? I would never make it a primary driver, but uh-huh. it's like a nice vote of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. They they can definitely be I mean, I'd rather have them there than not. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And we've talked before about how they're selling is is for some reason for for a few reasons, like diff- can be quite different than buying in that uh you can sell because you still like the stock but maybe you are reallocating maybe you want to buy something and use it for your own income so there's a lot of reasons to sell potentially um whereas buying you would think there's only one reason and that's because you actually like the stock at the current price but unless you're required to own 10 times right more than- <laughs> right so it's debatable and there's obviously um, right. exceptions for all of that but yeah um, that's a general kind of thought Mm-hmm. yeah um if you guys are interested i actually spent a little bit of time just before the stream making a little like 
spreadsheet calculator on these buybacks and oh, what yeah. it would actually do to the nav per share if they yeah. execute the buybacks at a particular discount. Let's um, look at it. He's bringing out the evidence. <laughs> I think I've I think I've done the maths right, but we'll have a look. We can mess around with some this numbers. Is science right here. This is science. Some they've got through. that in the presentation also. Is it the same? Or? Oh, they do. Yeah, <laughs> they have it oh, in okay. the presentation. Well, well they they reinvented the wheel for this. So yeah. Let's see it. <laughs> well, I I can mess with numbers. I can put in you know particular discounts and amounts of shares they want to retire and whatever. But um, you minute a bit. Yeah, I think it would be helpful. That's better. No, it's not. <laughs> That's go. better. Right. So the current discount um, looking today is about 41%. So um, basically what I've done is I've sort of gone through and said if they want to retire X percentage of the shares, so I'll put 50% back in there, they're going to obviously have to spend some net asset value to do that repurchase. So the sort of absolute total net asset value will go down uh, obviously the shares have been cut in half here but the net asset value per share should grow so um i think the current nav what was that at about 109 is the current net asset value so if they were able to repurchase 50 percent of the shares at the current discount which i don't know if that's mechanically possible because it's such a big discount mm -hmm. um but that would increase the net asset value per share pretty substantially about 40 percent um if it was a smaller buyback obviously the impact's less significant and if they somehow bought back like 90 percent of the shares or something the numbers get kind of crazy but um, hopefully that that gives people a feel for how the math sort of works on this cool If you guys want to see the presentation, I've also sent that in the group. I'll pull it up. In the private chat. Thanks. Here I was thinking I'd done all the reading on this this morning and I missed the main presentation. <laughs> so I think it's Sorry. slide. You're fact checking. Um, it's a cool slide, background. Slide number five. I'm oh, sorry, slide number four. Yeah. Wait, this one? Yeah. 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 Four, so 10 billion, that's the value. 20 billion, that's the value. 30 billion, that's the value. Yeah. And literally, like someone asked him, so why do you pick 10, 20, 30? He's like the multiples of 10. So <laughs> that's why you pick 10. <laughs> yeah. Good. So he's like, don't hold the 30 billion number. Is like, this is like definitely what we're going to do. Doctrine. Right. Yeah. It can be more or less. So this is just an example. Mm hmm. So yeah, if you just scroll to the next slide, it shows that every 10% discount reduction evaluates into 17 billion in value unlocked. So yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I'm assuming these numbers include the potentially egregious compensation. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that's included because they uh, so in the call, they just said that, yeah, we released a report this morning. So, and that's, that's it. They didn't go into any details about what's changed, what's what, nothing. So <laughs> um, that's in a separate presentation by itself. And that's what they haven't even specified. What are the targets? So like, um, if the stock goes up to this level, they'll be compensated this much. There's... They haven't revealed anything about that. So this, I think this whole buyback situation, it begs the question, is is process just like a special situation, short term, get in, get out sort of thing, let the buybacks go and then you're out? Um, or or is it, or are we trying to view this more as like a compounder that you hold forever or, you know, many years and let them keep managing money in a way that they've been managing with the, you know, they have the home run with 10 cent. Maybe they got more home runs in the making. We'll see. But, uh, what, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the thesis there? It sounds, sounds very short term, um, based on this stuff. Brad, you got any thoughts? Um, 
I mean, it's a tough game that they're playing, right? You mentioned this before, Karan. Uh, trying to pick winners in such a in such competitive spaces. So, yeah, I really want to see how it unfolds with with the buybacks. Um, yeah, it, it's not like a coffee can investment for me by any by any stretch. They need to stay on top of their game. I think it's fantastic. Like for the next twelve months, like mm -hmm. we're gonna get great returns probably. Um, beyond that, like, let's see, maybe management might actually do something that's different on, you know, apart from the Tencent business, they're able to grow something. Who knows? Like, um, they've done like 20% per year as per their own calculations, um, excluding the Tencent stake. So clearly, you know, they are good at capital allocation. That's pretty much why most of us who invested in process have that investment. So like I personally see it as like a call option on like um, Indian startups in a way. So that's how I see process. We're, yeah, getting, I, we're getting quite a few questions in the chat. We were talking a little bit about it earlier, but about those other holdings and we didn't seem too excited, but is there anything in there that seems sort of promising uh, in that remaining, what, 23% of, of the net asset value? I'm sure all of it's promising, whether it uh, materializes. <laughs> as, yeah, as you know what I mean. Question, though. Like, anything that's especially yeah. promising. Yeah. It seems like know, everything the... focuses on Tencent naturally. It's the majority of the portfolio by a long shot. But, you know, 23% of the portfolio, that's a, that's a big chunk. Um, so should we write off all of that or is there something in there? I think the way they're approaching it is like they consolidate. So at least in food delivery. They control the largest players and essentially they're going to control the entire industry and then just going to raise prices. So how long that could last, how inelastic is demand, that's something we'll see. Um, but that's, I think, pretty much what they're doing in every aspect. They've done that with classifieds. Uh, they control most of the major classified companies, so either directly or indirectly. Yeah, I, I don't want to speak for Jason here. He's in the comments, but he, he's saying um, he, my interpretation of Jason's view of this is pretty similar to how I've kind of looked at it from the outside in is that um, it's like a vehicle to get into a business that is what most people would probably categorize as a compounder with 10 cent. And then you have some added potential extra stuff in there with like a closing, a shrinking discount to NAV and maybe you have one of these smaller businesses do really well, which which adds to your return as well. So it's a bit of a weird combination of like maybe it maybe ten cent is a coffee can business. Um but you've also got this big discount to nav thing. And I think Jason had a comment there before that it's potentially the best of both worlds. Um <laughs> cause you've got like the fifty cent dollar aspect and you've got the, you know, high return on invested capital, lots of growth type type aspect but you but you also have like management who's kind of being paid to burn money that's the downside <laughs> to some extent yeah. so i mean how much value you want to put on that i mean i don't know I'm, i think i'm overly critical about process although i'm the one who kind of put it in the punch card portfolio <laughs> yeah but like i'm overly critical about it <laughs> yeah. someone did ask earlier Kron, what percent of your uh portfolio is is a process like 15 14 15 around that did you used to own 10 cents separately before you switched to kweb yeah. no you didn't no you, you just had i think you had baba right before you yeah, sold so that. kweb is like 20 percent alibaba's at like almost 20 and process is at like 15 okay yeah mm. I think Frank might have had both. I, I think he kind of split it down the middle yeah. and went. That's half, right. That's right. It, it was half half. Yeah. It was Frank. You're right. Yeah. 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 Th there's a lot this, of things. So, Go for yeah, it, Frank. Yeah. Even with the recent dividend that Tencent issued, um, so Tencent recently issued a dividend of the shares of JD because of antitrust and so on and so forth. Um, so Process took those shares and kind of just dumped them right at the bottom, just because it did not align with their 
strategic objectives. Like you really have to question like is what is management doing? Because <laughs> they're just like, yeah, we give us the money right now. We want to use it for what exactly they haven't clarified, but they just dumped those shares. I don't know. That was just another surprising thing for me. So, yeah. Why don't they just spin the 10 cent shares? What do you mean? Like, why don't they dividend you the 10 cent shares and then you just get 100% of the net asset value straight away? Then they'd have nothing to bank on. <laughs> <laughs> that would instantly just unlock a lot of value, but like, they'll never do that. <laughs> and there's got to be some sort of tax consequence of like liquidating a large portion or doing something like that. There's got to yeah. be. Because otherwise, yeah, why wouldn't so they have done it by now? At least that's, that's what, what if they give a dividend, they have to pay tax on it. But then if they sell it and then reinvest it, there's no tax. So, so is that right? Mm -hmm. I guess mathematically, it probably makes the most sense to just sell 10 cent, do enormous buybacks while there's a discount, and then maybe spin spin out the 10 cent stake. Assuming taxes aren't uh, aren't crushing. Yeah, which seems to be the case that they're not, but. No, they'd be better off spending their existing businesses that are private. So Evan says that they're simply prideful empire builders, so they wouldn't dare <laughs> destroy the empire. <laughs> yeah, but whose empire are they building? Their own or the shareholders? That's a big <laughs> question there. Yeah. Like no no one really asks that question of Berkshire because the incentives are pretty well aligned there, but Maybe maybe not in this case. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Like the only way like process will redeem itself is if they find another ten cent. That's pretty much it. Like well, if they just we've yeah. mentioned it before, but you gotta realize how or we all realize it, but just as a reminder, they have held ten cent for this long, which is already like pretty amazing for anyone to do that, whatever the incentive structure is. To just to hold a, uh, an investment that one becomes that profitable, but then to hold it the whole way through, like that, that's pretty rare that you ever see that. You know, like you, you've heard all the stories about people, oh, I missed Amazon, I missed Apple, I missed all these big run-ups, um, but they literally were there from the beginning and held it all the way to the, to today, which is pretty incredible. Um, that's true, and they're still holding. But so it, did so. SoftBank. SoftBank also did the same for Alibaba. And that story is played out very differently. Very similar structures, very similar everything. But you know, you can see it kind of. Well, I, I kind of picture SoftBank as a little bit different in how they throw money around, but I see what you're saying. Um, SoftBank strikes me as quite a bit more aggressive and just. I, I keep. I always think of the WeWork situation where they just came in and threw money onto a fireplace for some reason. <laughs> I think that's what, that's what it looked like. Um, and I, I know they, they, they make big swings and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but, but yeah. I don't know. Like there's a lot, you can't really judge um, management directly based on everything they're doing, but they've done so much to avoid um, taxes. They've done, they said that they wouldn't sell the 10 cent stake until 2024. They're doing it now just to, you know, kind of boost their own incentives. It makes me kind of even doubt management a little bit. So, hmm. yeah. Has management changed a lot in recent in recent years, or even in the last decade? I think the CFO has been there since 2004, I think. Sure. And the CEO has been there since 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And the chairman, Koos Becker, he's been there since the big bang. So he's yeah. he's kind of been there throughout. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, the incentive structure for Koos at the beginning, you know, it was all performance. And so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how different is that structure now and how could that impact strategy going forward versus what they were able to do with Tencent? Mm -hmm. What else we got? Yeah, what else we got in the comments? 
You know, one I saw at 801 was one from Eunice about nav versus intrinsic value. Maybe we could touch on that real quick. This one? Uh, the no. one, a couple no, up really. from there. Yeah. Be careful to distinguish between nav and intrinsic value. Ultimately, the repurchases make sense if the price is below intrinsic value, not nav. Exactly. So the value of the private equity investments, like if you take them at face value, share buyback is fantastic. But if you discount it to what you would think is reasonable based on how everything in the VC area is crashing, it might not be as interesting. Yeah, yeah but if Tencent was overvalued and they sell it to do buybacks, that still makes sense mathematically. It's, it's, it's very hard to get around the fact that you're buying a dollar for less than a dollar. I, can, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm that's making you, people scratch make, their heads. You make a that, great return. But I think, I think mm. what Eunice is pointing out is there's a discount based on nav, right? But yeah. what is the discount based on intrinsic value? Yeah, I, I think if you're looking to own process, that's def, that's a very important question to ask. But if you're a process management team deciding whether to do buybacks or not, I don't think it actually changes the equation, personally. Right. I think as per management, it was like close to 52%. That's where the discount was. That's what I remember seeing somewhere. One of the presentations or one of the calls, something. Based on yeah, their yeah. estimate of intrinsic value? Yeah. Okay. I think they're going with uh, NAV when they were doing it. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean... Um, they're going to go I'm with whatever's a... higher. They're not going to go with the lower <laughs> ones. <so. laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and you'd be pretty hard-pressed to argue that some of the big China tech companies are expensive at, at the moment. So I don't know, unless you think they're going to zero. <laughs> yeah, right. It probably depends on your political stance more than anything. <laughs> Uninvestable. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We got also, how's the punch card portfolio doing? I think it, it must have recovered pretty recently. No. <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to define decently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm just gonna say no on the recovery part. Compared to ARC. <laughs> yeah, I can show you the punch drunk portfolio. Um, if you want to yeah, take I'll, a pull, I'll pull up uh, our flagship fund, and then you can show the punch drunk fund. Actually, uh, the shameless clone portfolio is doing okay. Yeah. There's, Even with Facebook, you got a bunch of Berkshire in there, right? That probably helps a lot. <laughs> Just as like a nice yeah, stable backbone. Well, yeah, Chevron's helped actually as well. Oh God! Punch card. <laughs> so we're down. Th we're down thirty-five percent, I think. Yeah, because. Uh... Turtle Beach and, and SRG have just been slaughtered in the last <laughs> month. <laughs> Absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> Processes. Hey, uh, I can hear I can hear Frank saying I told you so. I can I hear, can hear it too. I can hear it too. <laughs> Processes is, is coming back. I think that was the worst performer in there for, for quite some time. I think you're right. It was. Mm. Poor, SRG is kind of wild that it it's fallen so sharply, um, I guess, just because of the interest rate environment and the general sentiment against commercial real estate, I would, I would guess. Um, granted, they have their own company level problems, but there's a pretty sharp drop from, they were, they were hovering around like 10 for a while after being all the way up in like the high teens. Crazy. Well, yes. you get a sense from management, they're starting to get a little desperate to unlock some value. Yeah. Too. So that, that's not a great look for investors. No, for sure. Yeah, like I was saying, they they have they have company level problems for sure that they've had for a while. They're just yeah. kind of materializing, it seems. Yeah, Seritage is um, sort of leverage squared a little bit to interest rates going up, and not not in the direction you'd want it to be. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. You, you've got actual leverage, uh, you know, and then um, you've got cap rates. Cap rates expanding. Is that the right term? Cap rates going yes. up. Yes. Um, prices going down. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> What's a punch drunk looking like? Do you have that one, Tom? I don't think I have that one. 
Yeah, I'll grab it. I'll show, uh, oh. in the meantime, I'll show our performance That's against a, the S&P. Punch drunk it. It's a beautiful sight. Hang on. Punch card much better than the S&P at losing money. <laughs> so um, here's punch drunk. Also better than the S&P at losing money. <laughs> okay. Huh. So Pershing Square is actually holding us up there. <laughs> the ca up the cash. <laughs> the the yeah. best form of cash. Yeah. That's liquidating just, in like 22 days. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Ark and Tesla have done uh, <laughs> done so poorly that they've really helped <laughs> us like, get under the S&P. A lot of the, the portfolio is just like straight up cash, which doesn't <laughs> sound so bad right now. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Hey, we could have had Carvana in there. Like, that would have been... No, that would have been a better one, yeah. <laughs> that would have triggered some folks, though. Poor Carvana. I hope it's a 100 bagger. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Like... Uh, you always gotta you always want to root for company success, right? Well that would be awesome. That would be fantastic. Like if <laughs> the, you, like, it's just, business is hard. <laughs> it's a that's about it. But business is hard. Didn't Sam Zell say business is easy? What was what was that quote? Um you, you read it's the like book when, more recently than I did. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, business is easy when the uh when the downside's low and the upside's high, you just do it. It was something like that. Sure, sure. Which means we don't do much. Uh, business yeah. is easy when it's not. Business is easy when in you, the unusual circumstance that it's easy. Is basically what he said, right? <laughs> Pretty much. I've got the shameless cloner portfolio here. If you want to see something that's just just slightly ahead of the market, not exactly crushing Ooh, it. No, look at that. Um, look at that divergence. We out. had a terrible. We had a terrible start. This was all Alibaba falling off a cliff initially, and we've just finally scraped ahead of the index. Have, have you been swapping portfolios out of, or swapping positions out of it, or has it been all the same from the start? Uh, it is. Well, I, I do a like the day the thirteen Fs come out. I um, make any relevant changes, basically. But have you like gotten rid of a holding completely and replaced it with something else to this point? Um, yeah, it took me a little while to get fully invested. Um, so, so there were like slow uh, exits out of like a short-term bond fund, and then I think um, Hilton Grand Vacations I've fully exited. I'll show okay. you all the trades if you want. Um, Why'd you get out of Hilton Grand? Uh, good question. I think I didn't well, think Cliff sold any. There. Yeah, it was upgrading to like a Mount Rushmore pick. I think it I got see. replaced by Winnebago, possibly. Um, it's a little bias in there. So Nor Norbert <laughs> beats out Sosin, huh? Yeah, because the the Sosin investment was like I needed to find something. There was still a big chunk in cash, and none of my top four or five did anything interesting enough. So I, I defaulted to Cliff Sosin after that. No, to be honest, Tom. You saw that. You saw that chance to add a nice uh, RV stock. Add an RV. Oh, <laughs> You're just like, yeah. I would I have loved it that. if he bought Thor or something. But yeah, wasn't Thor would be preferred, but you know, it'll settle for Winnebago. Yeah, <laughs> and there's been a few few dividend reinvestments and things, but the only thing fully sold is my bond fund, which is basically cash, and then ah, um, oh, I cut Meta in half actually. Uh, and sold Hilton Grand Vacations. So there you go. All right. Did Robert Lou add to Naked Wines or not super I know it's been recently? Like falling off a cliff recently. Yeah, they sure. uh, their auditors came out with like a going concern um, hmm. potential issue. <laughs> so uh, yeah, investors don't really like that. Well, yeah, uh, Buffett did buy more um, Occidental today. I saw the notification. <laughs> How much more? I, I, I haven't seen that yet. I think like like 580, 580 million or something. That is that is that that's pretty small relative to what he's already invested, right? 
Yeah, Champ change. He increased shares by 6.4%. Okay, so. uh, that's pretty significant. Yeah, it looks like Norbert did add to Naked Wines just a week ago. Hmm. Wow. And that new Didn't position that in uh, UK. Hmm. That's you know, it's really interesting. We should talk about see... that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we will. Yeah. It's interesting to see like all these, I mean, like up and coming Mount Rushmore type investors like Jeff Source and Rob Vinal, uh, Norbert Lou also, you know, kind of um, adding to Carvana, Naked Vines, companies that, you know, maybe aren't less as, as followed as like Micron or Alibaba or something. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a lot of good value there. If you understand the business. Yeah. yeah. I do find it kind of, and not, not funny, but it, it seems counterintuitive when, yeah, when you see like a value, what you, your, your value mentors, if you want to call them that, um, investing in like highly unprofitable companies. And then it makes you question like, wait a second. I thought the whole game was like trying to get these nice profitable cash flowing companies at, at a discount. Warren Buffett style. Warren Buffett's not investing in highly unprofitable companies most of the time, at least. So, so it makes you question it. Um, and you see such conviction behind it that, um, but then you have to remind yourself that's where a lot of the, that's where a lot of the big gains are made when you can get something when it's not profitable and then becomes profitable. That's where a lot of the, the action will happen. Um, well, yeah. It reminds me of Guy Spear. He was at, I think the Berkshire meeting maybe in 20, 2008, 2010, and one of his investing friends pitched him Apple. He's like, no, I don't invest in tech. And then five, five years later, he sees Buffett buy into Apple. He's like, you know, these, these rules that we have that are immutable. Um, it's interesting to look at those. Is that what got you looking into Coinbase? What's that? Is that what got you interested in Coinbase? <laughs> Oh, we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's happening guy... in the crypto space, by the way. I have no idea about crypto, but like, I just keep seeing like FTX, this and that. Well, yeah, guys... they, they, they spend like all of their money on marketing. <laughs> yeah. FTX is like the... It's like everyone's a sponsor. Like, yeah. Are we sponsored by FTX? <laughs> no, we should. <laughs> Why are we? We'll have to say something really nice about their CEO in every single ad. Yeah. If they make sure to include that. <laughs> I've noticed. <Jeez. laughs> I have I have noticed the frequency of um, people on Twitter saying "have fun being poor" has has gone down a lot these past few months i don't know i don't know if you guys noticed that that's yes, crypto is like halved <laughs> like, yeah, you're yeah. Having fun at this point so you know <laughs> yeah yes. they, you know you hear a lot about the happening with with bitcoin i don't i don't think this is what they had in mind <laughs> <laughs> it's, a stock, it's like a stock split it's just yeah it's cut yeah. yeah yeah and whatever you guys are seeing in bitcoin i mean the altcoins i'm sure are just getting <laughs> you know I mean, it's like what's happening in in the NASDAQ with these unprofitable tech companies. They're just getting yep. destroyed. Rat poison, <laughs> as Charlie would say. Yeah. So, should we wrap it up with something? Let's wrap it up with something. There's a lot of good questions. I mean, yeah. A lot of heritage questions, but like I don't think we should talk about heritage at least for the next three months, and then we can. <laughs> I, I I literally put a reminder in my calendar. This was a few weeks ago now. To um, a, a year from that point, to say you're allowed to do something with your heritage position now if you want to. Oh. So that I've I've locked it up. That's what nice. I've done. for I like what that. date? What date is that? Uh, it was like a year from a few weeks ago. <laughs> All right, so you're just you're you're not you're gonna coffee can it for a year. Yeah, it's sort of like time. um yeah, it's um I I think I kind of got that lesson out of the guy spear. Um uh what was the company called? Lab something. Um the Roche Roche Labs or something. The Switzerland uh, it's, it's like Laboratory Corporation of America, I think. Mm. Um anyway. The company that he sold for like a 
seventy percent loss, and then it was a hundred bagger or something. <laughs> right. it's not not to say Syracuse is going to be a hundred <laughs> by any means, but I, I want to um, try and try and not do something too dumb. The, yeah, is, the isn't that way. more of like the the Toby Carlisle approach? You, you buy the company cheap, and then you just hold, and if it goes to zero, whatever. But you'll never get the hundred bagger in many cases if you don't hold basically forever. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of I, I mean, of... there's a yeah. Particularly if Sierra struggles to sell some of these properties, there's a real chance it does very bad. But um, yeah, I'd prefer to not touch it. I don't think Toby's going for the hundred baggers, though, is he? I think he's is he mainly playing the mean reversion game. Well, I think his view is changing on that a little. Uh huh. Okay. Well, in any event, it's it's still the same sort of thing. It's just let everything play out, and if stats are on your side and you're actually picking cheap stocks and your upside should be much higher than your downside, even if a large portion goes to zero. I think that's the thesis. Um, and it's just, it's, you know, market timing is hard. Stock timing is hard. So I think it just yeah. goes to that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, there was a, there was a banking question from, the oh, Tom, Tom's in the banks earlier. Now. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys want to talk about Tom that. Wants to, Tom wants to flex his banking knowledge. Uh, uh, no, I, I was actually just going to say I, I I don't want to talk about that particular <laughs> right now. <So>. Okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, I was actually just bringing up some of the Seritage stuff. So it's it's been less than two years since we got interested in Seritage. Yeah. So um, yeah. just to put, put that in perspective a little bit. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a pretty wild. <laughs> It's like just swings in the stock price just in, in, in the last year. It's been pretty crazy for really not a ton of changes in the fundamentals other than kind of just the macro uh, environment. That's, that's been, seems to be the biggest change and company level. It seems like a lot of the news has been kind of positive with the debt restructuring that we saw some months ago. Um, yet look where the stock price is now because time has passed. Time is not on Seritage's side. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see a little bit more change in the fundamentals with Seritage yeah. personally. But Tom, the sales that have come up in the past, like recently, have they all been like around your estimates or higher or lower? Or any idea about those? Um, yeah, I, I haven't. Well, the sales activity was very low in the last quarter. I'm not sure if you you noticed that. Um, that was I know to the do Hawaii with the change. one was higher. Yeah, but then... yeah, that, yeah. So that was a few months back now. But um, yeah, the, I mean, it's it varies a lot, individual comp to individual comp. Um, but yeah, they've. Uh, I mean, they've been in the right ballpark. They've got um, like 38 but... or 28 properties for sale now. I think. Or something uh, like well. That. Well, they've got that many just in that specific basket of like right. ex Sears store retail type properties. They may have others on top of that that we don't know about. <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, That's they need to come up. They need to come up with something like six hundred and forty million uh, before June. What, next next June. June twenty three. A little less yeah. than a year. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the price that they sell, whatever they sell, is close to your Crexy X estimates or like is it way lower or way higher? I think that'll give us a good um, idea about what we can expect moving forward. I'd be surprised mm -hmm. if it's much different from your estimations now, but if cap rates dramatically rise for some reason in the next year, then that's going to obviously throw things off. But I don't think cap rates really haven't moved a whole lot, though I think you are starting to see some purchasing slow for buyers with interest rates on the rise and that, that people are pumping the brakes there. Lenders are pumping the brakes. So that's where you might see some uh, tension, we'll say, with pricing. Yeah, if we if we just get some deflation and go to like negative 2% interest rates, that'd be pretty nice. <laughs> this year to try now, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> go full European mode, might be negative dreaming interest there. rates. <laughs> yeah we've already got negative yeah. real rates by quite a bit so uh making ne negative nominal rates too on top of that would be pretty wild you know yeah. just in inflation relief inflation <laughs> inflation relief checks <laughs> inflation yeah. relief was doing the same thing cuts. like one year back 
they would be in a fantastic position by now. <laughs> One year ago, interest rates were like nowhere close, right? I mean, yeah, but development think, takes time. <laughs> yeah, but they could just sell things. off the. They could like have liquidated yeah, a large yeah. portion. Of it. Yeah, I don't know. They had management change and yeah, a bunch of turmoil. I don't know. There was a lot. There, there were some plenty of concerns at the time too, just with especially the retail and they're not exactly selling. I, I, they're, they're not exactly selling a bunch of premier properties. So I, I don't know what uh, what the exact thoughts were. But yeah, it would yeah, be interesting to see what the alternative universe would have been had they actually sold off more aggressively, even at a discount. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm just looking up some commercial property price data for the U.S. But it's only got through till the end of the fourth quarter, two thousand twenty-one. So yeah, the the macro uh, the macro level like nationwide stuff kind of lags. Yeah. So. But it's we kind of tough to to see what but, prices but, have done. But yet. speaking from my uh, experience at work, we we have seen some people pump the brakes because of uh, rates rising, um, which isn't surprising. But uh, if that keeps happening, then we're gonna have problems. But. Yeah, for sure. It's working its way through. <laughs> it's just uh, it's, all eyes are on the central bank. We'll say as they have been for a long time. When is the next meeting? It's sometime this month, right? But they meet like every week now, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is that the meeting, or is that the meeting about the meeting? Yeah, right. The meeting about the meeting. <laughs> Jay Powell does like a, a <laughs> press conference every week when he norm when I think he was the first Fed chair ever. To start doing that like no one has been this outwardly facing so mm. i think he likes the spotlight but <laughs> he, he, uh, he loves the memes maybe he, i guess so yeah he, he likes it enough to keep doing it yeah you guys got any other questions you want to take here maybe one more i am tired i'm so slightly jet lagged <laughs> jack you've been getting pinged about sleep number uh the lawsuit i happening. could use some there. sleep right now <laughs> uh -huh. I, I do plan on uh when we move down to houston um i think we'll buy a sleep number mattress because the mattress we oh. we have now is on a probably in his last couple of year or two and since we're making the move it's not really worth bringing it down so uh yeah i think we'll try to, if we can get one because of the order backlog um but what was the question long sleep number where at I guess there's a lawsuit happening. Eight forty-one. The first comment at eight forty-one. Oh, I don't know about that. Did that happen in the last week? I've been kind of off the news for the last week because uh, it was abroad. Put it on your list, Jack. Yeah, let's see. Has anyone been buying anything recently? Nope. No. Uh, um, I paid for my appraisal <laughs> and, and, and survey houses, and, and fees. <laughs> the month before buying is expensive, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say the uh, the loan and appraisal fee is like I'm using the same company uh, is like three hundred dollars more than it was last year. So like, in, inflation's legit. <laughs> I think it all costs like 750 bucks this time around. Whereas last year it was like more like 500. Hmm. Yeah. The, there's, there's a couple of things I'm interested in buying. I'm actually just trying to get access to put options for the first time hmm. at the moment. Nice. So, um, yeah. <laughs> they, they give, they give those to you as soon as you open a Robinhood account <laughs> here in the U S oh, just open a Robin account account. Like, hey, you want to use leveraged options? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Here they are crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, option premiums are very high at the moment. On yeah, well, on a I lot bet. of have mission cast like convinced you to go to the options route. Is that, uh, is that no? This this would be more of like a Peterson type approach of selling a put, nice. um, collecting a premium. Um, whereas Mitch and Cass are are buying options, puts on DLT. Yeah. yeah. They bought puts on TLT, which um, probably straight after the podcast have, I imagine their returns gone backwards a little bit. Um, not sure how, how much exactly, but that's worked very well for them. Um, yeah, up, what, 500% or something on a 10% 
at cost position, something like that. Nice. That's an inflation hedge or an interest rate hedge. Here's what I found about sleep number, just to close that loop. I think it's just one of these, like, I almost call them like rent seeking lawsuits where, where they're alleging securities fraud because they made false, allegedly made false and misleading statements and failed to disclose that they had suffered a severe disruption in supply chain, yada, yada. Um, so I don't know if this is probably settled at some point, but it, it's apparently from uh, last year. So for foam, but, you got to have that foam. <laughs> yeah, right. It's actually there. It's a lot of it is a chip shortage because all their beds are high tech. Oh, um, wow. That's, that's been a huge bottleneck, <laughs> I guess. Um, why, why do you need a chip to sleep? Oh, it's because they're all they're like high tech beds. They they fold, <laughs> and then uh, they also have like they're they have like some sort of scanning technology that tells you how you're sleeping and all that. That's proprietary, and I guess that needs that needs uh, chips as well. So <laughs> a lot of it is actually the chip shortage for a mattress company, which is kind of goofy. Is that is that snake oil? Yeah. Or does that actually help? <laughs> What the uh, like track your sleep sort of stuff? <laughs> yeah, I call it snake. It's not snake oil. It's not like it's not saying that you're. It's but not do like you getting... like it? Like if you're running that business, like do you do you slow production because you can't get chips? Is, is it that crucial? Wait, what? No, yeah, like the the whole the whole brand is that the bed can change. Like it's literally the, the sleep you pick your number. And like it's literally the name of the brand. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like the whole brand is that these, these mattresses are like, they're programmable. You can change settings on your side and the other side of the bed as well. So two people oh, can have different okay. settings. Um, that's like, the they, they could have, they could have come out with like a vintage mattress line when, when, <laughs> with, uh, which is just a, it's just a mattress. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> old, old timey mattress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Vintage. I love that. <laughs> Slap the logo on it. <laughs> yeah. Should be Historic in mattress. <laughs> um, Jesse, my email's in the description of all my videos. See you comment there. So we'll see if that lawsuit goes anywhere. Uh, the, the, I, the, those lawsuits seem to be dime, dime a dozen. The shareholder lawsuits just looking for looking for a payout real quick. <laughs> Speaking of which, I actually received uh, from the state of Illinois recently. I received, I think it was four hundred dollars from a Facebook settlement for like face scanning <laughs> technology. So I basically received a four hundred dollar dividend from Facebook that I used to buy more Facebook. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, uh, and I think I'll be getting it. There's this very extensive privacy law in Illinois, I guess, that is being used to sue all the big tech companies for face capture, you know, like the face mm. scanning te technology. So Google is next on the chopping block and then Snapchat as well. So we'll see if they settle and then I'll get more payments as a, uh, with my, uh, Illinois status before I before I leave to Texas. <laughs> so so it Facebook like... still has the topography of your face. They just had to pay you for it. Is that the yeah? Idea? They paid some settlement to Illinois, and okay. everyone in Illinois who claimed it got four hundred bucks. It's, it's like I'm like, oh, I've been wronged so much. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> common prosperity. Just saying. Uh oh, what's that? <laughs> it sounds like common prosperity. I'm just, it just is. Saying. It is. Yeah. Do you guys know? Yeah. Or, but yeah. I, I'm, but I'm whole. I just want to let everyone know I'm whole again. Like a, it, yeah. it was a huge crime against me. But now that I've received my $400, I'm all good. Um, and, and I forgive <laughs> Facebook for what they've done to me. And now you're going after Google. and you're Yeah, going now after it's Google's it. turn. And, and, and we'll see if that, that happens. And then Snapchat will be up next. And then, you know, I can finally live my life again. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, very that, that, joke around that, guy. that I liked it. Yeah, still better than that guy who said you look like a Christian. Like, oh yeah, I look like. A, at least you got four hundred bucks for this. Yeah, I look Christian. No, yeah, I, I'm I'm whole again. Yeah, I, I need my settlement from him too. I I I was deeply deeply hurt and by the those that that slander. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. Jack what, what, knows a lot of lawyers. It turns out yeah, he should he should know better than you know to say that to a lawyer. Like, <laughs> yeah, dangerous. I'll rep my I'll represent myself. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> Give me my 400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Go to small claims court just to bother people. Jack, do you mud? What's that? Do you mud? Do I mud? Your face. I, I think it's like a no, face no. treatment. He's no, that, oh, no. No. That, no, that was a suits joke. The, the oh, no. I, I, I've, I've barely watched any suits. <laughs> I've seen some okay. clips and I was like, yeah, this is not. <laughs> this, is, this is not what this they is how it works. <laughs> is this rugby you guys are talking about? No, suits. 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 Like the show. No, sure. The lawyer show. The, oh. the lawyer show. The highly yeah, dramatic, yeah. ridiculous lawyer yeah. show. Gotcha. <laughs> no, there's, there's, there's this guy in it that, um, like, his thing that he does to relax as he, as he goes mudding, um, which is basically where you go and just sit in, like, a bathtub type thing of just, like, a particular special kind of mud it's meant to be like good for your skin or no, I, sure, I do not do yeah. that so, so there you go he has like there's like these two two pompous lawyers like one there's like you know they're based in the states and then one came over from the uk one time and they were like arguing about like who has the best mud because they're both <laughs> into mudding and stuff it's pretty fun yeah i i uh working in a big firm um I see a little bit of that. Thankfully, my team is pretty chill, and I don't. It's not really within my real estate team. We're all pretty chill, transactional people. But the litigation folks, they they can get a little bit, they can lean that way a bit more. I mean, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing like the show, but just just a <laughs> yeah. little bit. <laughs> you see where some of the stereotypes come from. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, probably a good topic to wrap on. Mudding. Yeah, fantastic, informative. Yeah. Learn something um, new. <laughs> Yeah. With that said, thanks everyone for tuning in. We, we always appreciate it. And we thank you for liking the video as well. That goes a long way towards helping the channel. If you haven't done that already, you might as well. You've made it this far. Just go ahead and tickle that like button. Check out the subscribe button while you're down there as well. That would help us too. Um, and check out all the great links in the description. There's links for you. There's links for us. <laughs> there's links for both of us. So go ahead and check those out. we got the merch shop. Haven't plugged that in a while. Karan's exclusive merch that you can only get in that link below. Um, Shameless Cloners mugs, for example, a popular, a popular item. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Till next time, everyone. <laughs>